my dearest beloved, how I long to be with you again, to see your radiant smile. Please journey to Philadelphia, where we will be at liberty to meet this Monday at Independence Hall as the clock strikes six. Philadelphia and its countryside have a long history of making everyone feel welcome and free. Come to Philadelphia, get your history straight, and your nightlife gay. All cities have a gay scene, even if you have to look closely to find it. Yet in the hometown of the Liberty Bell, the presence of the LGBT community rings loud and clear. Commercials even advertise the city as a gay-friendly place to visit. Clearly, there is a unique social environment of tolerance and acceptance amongst all that history. Let's take a closer look at how the two come together as we examine the history of gays and lesbians in Philadelphia. Here we go. So oh. 
Abrams reports. The first gay paper in the nation to state proudly who it represents in its title is celebrating 30 years of publication. The 30 years its founder, Mark Siegel, has revolutionized the city of Philadelphia. You might know him as the man who brought Elton John here on July 4th, but he's done so much more. Most people in Philadelphia don't bat an eye when you discuss the gay and lesbian community anymore. But there was a time when there were only a handful of activists, and even fewer gay professionals who would risk their reputation by speaking out. Siegel says homosexuals were shunned from every section of society. There were problems everywhere in the gay community, but yet we didn't have a a forum. He started getting heard with demonstrations, even interrupting several national broadcasts, including the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. At the same time, Siegel and some friends went up against all the critics by daring to put their side of city life on paper. There were times that our front windows were broken out when we came in in the morning. Our offices were trashed. Siegel has achieved his American dream, influencing public policy every day, even sitting on the board of directors of the Pennsylvania Newspaper Association, a group that ignored his newspaper for 15 years. There now is a voice. With a weekly circulation of 20,000, he knows people are finally listening. Whoa, let's rewind a little. <laughs> Gay publications have always played a huge role in Philadelphia's history, long before Siegel's Philadelphia Gay News hit the stage. The latter, a lesbian magazine, and Drum, a publication for gay males, were both produced in Philadelphia in the early to mid-1960s. The early LGBT movement was fueled by these types of publications, which combined entertainment and gay rights news. Philly's first gay bookstore, Jay's Place, opened in 1969, and Giovanni's room on Spruce Street remains a popular spot in today's gayborhood. So as you can see, gays and lesbians in Philadelphia have come a long way over the years, due partly to their hard work and partly to increased acceptance from the community. Clearly, they have a lot to celebrate.